it was early 2006. I had just recently been through a, a terrible divorce. Um, not long after that, I was doing everything that you would expect a newly divorced, irresponsible man to be doing, chasing women and drinking all the time. Shortly after that, I was working at the police academy at the time. I had a guy I was working with brought me into his office. Uh, his name was Philip. He said, man, I need to talk to you about something. I said, what is it you need to talk to me about? He said, just have a seat. And he kind of forcefully put me in my seat. And so I sat there for a second, a little indignantly, and he looked at me and he said, man, if you keep living the way that you're living, you're going to end up in hell or, or uh, your life's going to be destroyed. And honestly, at the time, I didn't have time for any of that. I didn't care about Jesus he was selling. I didn't care about doing anything other than exactly what it is I wanted to do. Not long after that, um, a friend that I had at the time called me and said, hey, me and a girlfriend of mine are going to go um, have some drinks, and why don't you get another friend of ours and join us? So I believed at 18 years old that I had received salvation and continued in the same practice that I had been in. Nothing in my life changed from that point. Um, I I didn't tithe, I didn't pray, I didn't read my Bible, I didn't study the Bible, but I believed myself to be saved. I realized later on in life that I just was filling a seat and taking up space on Sunday mornings. Um, I'd never had an encounter with Christ. I didn't hear about this man that was willing to give his life for me in the church that I grew up in. Um, I heard about a God that was quite judgmental in 2006, um, I had been divorced for a couple of years and was really at a place in my life that I wasn't, I wasn't sure where I was going. I was introduced to Jim through a mutual friend. And as he and I progressed in our relationship, I, of course, was still going to church every Sunday. And he wasn't. And that bothered me. So my girlfriend at the time, wife now, gave me an ultimatum. And she said, you're going to go to church with me or we're not going to be able to date. And although she didn't say it exactly like that, that's what it felt like. And so we decided mutually that we would end up coming here to Cornerstone Church because I had been invited here about a year before by a friend of mine from work. And although we were intending to visit churches, we walked into this one and immediately realized that this is where we were supposed to be. From the moment we walked in here, the people treated us like we were family. Um, they really seemed to enjoy being here. The spirit, the, the feeling in the room was just electric. And the people seemed to believe what they were actually telling us. Pastor from the podium seemed as though he really believed that Jesus was real and that he died for us. And it happened that not long after that, Pastor Davis gave his testimony, and it was in that testimony that the Holy Spirit convicted me to the very, to the very core of me that Jesus was real and that he had actually died for me and that he wanted a relationship with me, which was unfathomable. And at that moment, I gave... I gave my life to Jesus, having never gone to an altar. I prayed and asked God to make me his in my seat. Shortly after salvation, I just really felt a call into ministry. And honestly, at that time, I had no idea what that meant. Um, so I sought a guy in the church. His name is Rick Smith. And he told me, he just told me to start preparing myself. And he started spending time with me. And we spent hours and hours a week together for the last several years and and I just sat under him and through that learning process I came to understand that that a man's gifts make room for him. Our life today is totally different from when it was um, in 2006. We went from a future that was somewhat unsure to a certainty that we love the Lord and we love one another. And when we got our hearts right with God, we were able to get our hearts right with one another. And we've got a very solid foundation to build our family on and build our future on. 
and we appreciate the ministries of Cornerstone Church for that. So from our conversion experiences in 2006 until now, uh, the two lives are completely opposite. We had no real future. We had no understanding of where we were going. Um, honestly, at that time, our relationship was in turmoil, although we had really just gotten married. And now, once we realized that, that God loves us, we understood that we could, we could love each other. And when we realized that we could love each other, the future just became a better place, a place we wanted to get to.